In this video, we're going to discuss one of the simplest measures of dispersion that we will learn in the course. When you think measure of dispersion, try to think of a measure of how spread out the data points are on the number line. So think spread, right? How spread out the data is on the number line. The range is a measure of this, and it's really quite easy. Before we get to its definition, though, let's take a look at this image below. Notice that both of the distributions of data have the same center. So in other words, they're centered on the number line in the same location. But you would say that the first one is much more spread out than the second one. In other words, the second distribution is much more clustered around its center, whereas this one is far more spread out. It has a lot more variation, we would say. So when you hear the expression measure of dispersion, try to think spread or variation in the data set. We're trying to measure that to give some concept of it. Because as you can see in this example, there's two different ways to have the same center in this particular case. In fact, there may be dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of ways to have the same center. So reporting the center of a distribution isn't the whole story. We also want to have a way to describe how spread out the data values are. We can call that either variation or dispersion, or more simply, we can just say the spread of the data set. So the range is our simplest measure of this. And the way to calculate the range is really simple. It's just the maximum value in your data set minus the minimum value in your data set. So in other words, the highest value minus the lowest value. And that is the range. And if you think about the range as a calculation, you would have to say the calculation is pretty simple. So what are the strengths and weaknesses of this measure of dispersion? I would say the strengths of the range is that it's easy to calculate, as we just saw, right? Just subtract two numbers. And it's very easy to interpret, right? Everyone kind of understands what's happening here. Imagine if I had a set of test scores and somebody earned a 100 in the class as the highest grade, and the lowest grade in the class was a 45. So the difference between 100 and 45 is 55. So we'd say there's a range of 55 in the data set. And that's very easy to understand. You can say, oh, OK, so from the lowest score to the highest score, there was a spread of 55 points. Very easy to interpret, very easy to understand. That is not as dispersed as a class where they have the highest grade being 100 and the lowest grade being 20, right? That has a range of 80, and the scores are more spread out there, it would seem. OK, so it's easy to interpret, easy to calculate. What are the weaknesses of the range? Well, basically, it's insensitive to differences between data sets with the same minimum and maximum values. What it means to say that the range is insensitive is to say that two data sets, or for that matter, several data sets, could have very different spreads or very different dispersions, yet they would have very similar or the same minimum and maximum values. We wouldn't want to label all of those different data sets as the same just because they have the same minimum and maximum values. In terms of their dispersion, it could be that one set is mostly clustered, but it has maybe a, an outlier on one end that happens to make the range similar to another data set that's very spread out. So because of that inability for the range to detect the difference between those two types of data sets, we don't like to use the range when we have a very large number of values. So when is it acceptable to use the range? Well, essentially, if you have a very small amount of data. For example, in this example, there are only four measurements, right? If you have just four measurements, then the spread of the data can be pretty well encapsulated by the idea of the range. The max minus the min here gives you a pretty good idea of how spread out these data values are. If you had hundreds of data values, that would be quite different. If you have 100 data points or even 30 data points, you probably wouldn't want to use the range to measure the spread in the data set. Because if you think about it, other than the maximum and minimum, the range ignores all the other values. Think about how many different ways you could position all the other values in the data set if you have 30, 40, 50, or 100 values, right? Just think about how many different arrangements of those points that aren't the minimum and the maximum that you could uh, rearrange on the number line, in which case you could create very different drawings or data distributions that have a very different type of spread or variation, right? And yet the range would label all of those variations as the same because the max and min would stay put in the same location. So it wouldn't matter if you put all the other points in one location, meaning that the data set was highly, highly, highly consistent with the exception of the max and the min. None of that would be reflected in the range, right? The range would literally just say that any data set that has the max and min that are the same has the same spread or variation. So the range is best used only for small data sets. So if you have a handful of measurements, then the range is probably perfectly acceptable. If you have a large number of measurements or even a moderate amount of measurements, you're better off using some other measure of dispersion.